What is going on guys, Jack here, and this is just a quick little message to let you guys know that this episode that you're watching, as well as two more upcoming Pentagon Challenge episodes, have issues with their recordings. Portions of the screen are cut out, and I'm really, really sorry about it. It's something that shouldn't have happened. I didn't realise that it was even an issue until, you know, in a few episodes time when I went back to render out episodes, because initially you wouldn't even notice it. It was perfectly fine for me when I was recording. So I'm really, really sorry. Hopefully you can still watch these three episodes without kind of your OCDs kicking in with half the screen missing. You don't miss any of the action in terms of what's going on on the pitch. If you've got any questions about stuff that was cut out of the screen, leave it down in the comments. I'll try and answer it as best as I can. And again, massive apology. I should have noticed, but as you guys will see with the next few episodes, um, I didn't have the capabilities to re-record these episodes because of how long they were. Uh, I believe episode 10, which also has this issue, um, was an hour-long special. So hopefully you guys can bear with that. Again, I want to stop rambling, but I am extremely sorry. Roll the tape. Let's get into the episode. What is going on, guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 8 of our Pentagon Challenge here with Waitakere United in the ASB Premiership. Hopefully you guys are good. Today, we are taking on Auckland City again. These guys, I want to win. I want to beat them so, so badly. I feel like I'm just going to live com every game against them till we win. Let's talk about the results. And as you can see by, well, the table here, we are absolutely flying and it's incredible. Right, so obviously with the Pentagon Challenge, as you guys will know, there is a lot of games to be played between episodes. I obviously cannot recap them all, so I'm going to go through some of the more memorable results. Uh, of course, last episode we drew 2-2 with Auckland City, who this season have struggled. And if we beat them today, we could put them on a really slippery slope kind of going into the second half of the season. So what you may notice immediately is how good we have been defensively. And let me tell you, we've been incredible. It's been great. Uh, Team Wellington was a good win. They finished second last year in the league. This came two games after the Auckland game. As you can see, a fairly 50-50 game, but Jose Reina and Archie Edwards with the goals that made the difference. We have made some signings since last episode, which I must remember to go through, and they have had an impact too. But yeah, as you can see here, lots of wins as we go through these. Hawks Bay, that was a good win. Uh, they are not a bad team by any means. If we look at where they are in the league, they're currently fifth. So to beat them 3-0, that was a good result. That was at home, as you guys can see here. Uh, Dylan Manicum getting a goal and Chris James. Chris James has really been a big player for us this year. He joined us. Uh, on a free at the end of last season, some of you guys might remember, and he's been a great player for us. So far in 17 games, one goal, seven assists, four man of the matches, a 7.56 average rating for him. He has been absolutely sublime, the New Zealand centre mid. Plenty of assists, his only goal come in there, but a great win against uh, Hawks Bay. We also won in the first round of the Chatham Cup, 9-1 on aggregate. Granted, we were playing uh, Forest Hill Mid Milford, as you guys can see here. Not the best team. In fact, they're in a weird tier in New Zealand I've never heard of. But we beat them convincingly. We also beat Young Heart 2-0 between the first and second legs of that knockout uh, cup game. As you can see, 2-0 here. Young Heart, uh, a very good team in this league. Um, I, I talked about them before last episode, I believe. They are currently in second. They're not a team to be laughed at. They're a very good team. Uh, and to beat them 2-0, that was a good result. Anyway, moving on through our results, you'll see that we won in the third round of the cup competition. It was actually our second uh, time in there. Uh, a win against um, Central United, that was a quite memorable win, as was the Bay Olympic one, just because it was quite a convincing win. However, we did draw with Wanderers SC, and this is the only other time besides last episode against Auckland where we've slipped up. This was away against Wanderers SC. Uh, a bit of a bore draw, not a lot to talk about, but uh, Wanderers FC in 8th place. You can see here, uh, they're not a bad team by any means. They're quite a strong team in this division. Uh, I believe if we look at their past positions, can, can we do that? Do I have to go on? Do I have to go to me and look at it? One sec. I want, I want to see the past positions, because they, they have been quite a good team, Wanderers. So I kind of feel like it's worth talking about them. How do I get past position? Right, it's on this screen. Where I'm lost. I still feel like with FM, I'm still like discovering and uh, learning pages as I go. Yeah, you can see here, they, they've been quite a good team this year. So to draw against them, not the worst result, I guess, but uh, could have been better. And then since then, we've continued on winning some great wins. 3-0 against Miramar uh, Rangers, which is quite a nice result, considering the fact that they were the first team we played against uh, when I first joined the club. And I believe we lost 1-0 in that game. So it's kind of nice to see the progress, I guess, by beating them. Uh, since then, we've actually got on a really good run of form of late, with the exception of in the Cup. In the Cup, we got FM'd. This is the most FM'd I've ever been. In the first leg, 
we drew nil-nil. A game that we dominated. They had two shots on target. We weren't super convincing in this game, but we probably deserved to win. In the second leg, we lost 1-0. They scored in the... Well, you can see it here. The 93rd minute of extra time with their fourth shot of the game, or their fifth shot of the game, their fourth on target. And I cried. So we are out of the cup, which is a bit disappointing because the board expected us to reach the final. However, I guess it does give us a chance to focus on the league, which as you can see in the league... We just continue to storm on our way. We're scoring three or four a game. If we look at the league table here in the ASB Premiership, um, our goal difference is at 46, which is not too bad. Uh, 20 games played, 18 wins, two draws. If we look at the league in detail, you can see only nine goals conceded in 20 games. That is not a bad defensive record, I think it's fair to say. Looking at our team, it's been a, a great kind of... I guess, uh, first half of the season, really can't complain. I mentioned the transfers, just a quick look at them. Uh, the two players we brought in since last episode, Alex Ruther. I brought this guy in because he was a free agent playing in the New Zealand first team, uh, in the international team. So I decided to go grab him. Been a nice little addition to our squad, a good little creative midfielder, can play centre attacking mid or centre mid. Quite a nice player to have. And we also picked up Paxton uh, Gorski. This guy is another American, similar to a few of the other players you may remember I signed at the start of this season. Uh, I found this guy, actually, because his agent approached me and um, basically said he's looking for a club. Would you be interested? And I decided to check out this guy on tiny wages, really, only £150 a week. And you can see nine appearances, three goals, two assists, a 7.23 average rating. He's been a great little player. Royal Salt Lake let him go in March time of the MLS season. I don't know if they if that's like wavering him because I know that's just before the season starts. But either way, he didn't find a club and he found us. And he's done a really good job for us, this guy. And he's still young at 21. Perhaps a little bit of potential to fulfill. And uh, been a nice little addition to the team. So speaking of the team, uh, how have our players been getting on? Well, Scott Basilage in goal has been a great little addition. The 22-year-old, of course, joined at the start of the season from Wellington. He's been fantastic. You can see he's got 12 clean sheets in 17 games. Uh, interestingly enough, if we look at his nationality, you'll see he is uh, Polish and Scottish, and he's not got an international cap yet for New Zealand. And bizarrely, I had the Polish uh, national team manager turn up at one of my games to watch him. So I guess that's a sign that he is doing well. His average rating's a little bit underwhelming. It's a little bit bizarre, this. For a player who's only conceded six goals in 17 games, a 6.79 rating seems absurdly low. I think that's always been a little bit of a problem with FM, perhaps. Um, but yeah, he's, he's done well when he's been called upon, despite the average rating perhaps being a complete lie. Elsewhere in the team, if we sort by rating, Chris James, who I've already drawn your attention to, been a, a standout player this year, been one of our best signings. Uh, Raniga, as well, has been a, a revelation this year. This guy was at the club when we joined, and last season he played eight games and got four assists. So far for us this year, he's playing right back most frequently. 19 appearances, 13 assists, and three player of the matches and a 7.49 average rating. Absolutely superb turnout by him. He's only 22. Uh, a few of our signings have been doing great as well. If we look here, Mark Chettelberg, who started off the season really well, as you guys may recall. He's continued on in that vein of form. Nine goals, five assists, a 7.48 average rating. He has had a little bit of an injury of late, which is a bit of a shame. He was out for four weeks, but he's back now. The pacey winger, uh, been a really key player of our side when we've been uh, kind of playing him and when he's been fit. Anyway, Michael Morris as well doing well. Uh, you guys might remember this guy, the American centre mid who we brought in. 18 years old, still got a little bit of potential to fulfil, but uh, just a fantastic player for us. Lacks consistency apparently, but as you can see, been in a really good vein of form of late. Seven goals, six assists, four player of the matches for him. He's been a, another good player for us. Uh, speaking of kind of uh, goal scorers, if we look here, Sean Lovemore been the standout player this year. Uh, he was at the club when we joined. You'll see he's now got his first cap and goal for New Zealand, which is really good for him. And he's got 16 goals in 19 games with a 7.31 average rating. We've really, really performed well across the park, but particularly going forward. And uh, Lovemore's really been the spearhead of our attack. You can see uh, Morris and Shelterberg getting on the goal scoring kind of tallies. Ryan Pickering, a player who, of course, you brought in, or Ronnie, if you want to still call him that. Uh, 25 years old, this guy. Um, you can see he's got six goals and two assists in 15 appearances. He's injured at the moment. He's been out with quite a serious injury. He's got a torn groin muscle. I believe he was out for four months. So that was a bit of a shame. Uh, however, when he's fit, he does come on off the bench and really have an impact for us. Jason Hicks doing well as well. 
A player who was at the club when we joined. He's got his first appearance for New Zealand as well. I don't think he had that before this season. But he's been doing pretty well, this guy. Four goals, four assists, 6.98 average rate. Not necessarily the best in the team, but he's scored goals. And he's also got assists when he has played. So all in all, pretty darn happy with how things are going. It's been a fantastic start to the year, really. Uh, looking at the performances, you can see the team's been pretty well rotated. Um, I have tried to keep... You know, the, the team kind of different, I guess, game on game, really mix things up. And, uh, I mean, I can't really complain at the moment. We've got players performing well. I thought Tim Myers was really going to be one of our starting centre-backs at the start of the year. But because of how well Aaron Scott's been doing, he's been starting for us. He's got a 7.25 average rating. Very difficult to drop him at the moment. Elsewhere in the team, well, at left-back, we would normally have Archie Edwards for today's game. But he's out injured, of course. He's on loan from Charlton. Ryan Pickering's injured, as is Colin Murphy who is a useful little backup centre mid for us. So that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, elsewhere in the team, you know, not too many injuries to tell you of. Uh, Chris James coming back from injury. He, of course, as I mentioned, has been a big player for us this year. Unfortunately, he's been injured a fair bit, so he probably isn't going to start today's game. I think this is how we're going to line up. Uh, while I remember there are a few transfers that I've done that are going to be coming in, you guys might remember uh, Jalali, who is joining us soon. He joins us in just a month's time, the Canadian forward. Really excited to have this guy at the club. Looks really good at 21 years old. Of course, we also have Josh Noto joining us. He joins us in 2017. Uh, so that is in this coming June. He looks like a really tasty striker, fantastic explosive pace. But I have also made two more signings, two defenders. The first one, Michael Williams here, uh, an American centre-back, signed him like a lot of our other Americans, joins us at the end of this month. Really excited to get this guy in. Looks like a really good centre-back. Perhaps not the fastest centre-back, and I do normally like pace with my centre-backs. But uh, looking at his mentals, looking at his technicals, he looks like he's going to be a fantastic player for our division, and he is only 18 years old. The other player I brought in, a player whose name you might remember, or certainly recognise from your own saves, Philip Foos. If you don't know, uh, some members of Sports Interactive, past and present, are embedded in the game kind of as an Easter egg where they appear as regens. I'm actually in the game as a regen myself. But Philip Foos is an American centre-back who will frequently appear in your saves. Looks absolutely fantastic. I found him just by searching his name because I know how good he is. This guy, though, he's not going to join us until 2018 in December. So that is actually two years from now as I record this. So I might have left the club by the time he comes in. But at 16 years old, uh, he looks like an absolutely incredible centre-back. Ridiculous that he's agreed to join this club in New Zealand. Of course, he's not got the biggest ambitions. He's currently playing... Uh, at the Red Bull, uh, New York Red Bulls Academy where he's not being paid a wage. You can see he's their key player there at the age of 16. Um, he's going to be a crazily good player potentially for this team in New Zealand. And who knows, maybe down the line when I move clubs, uh, players like Philip Foos, I might try and bring with me. You know, I might try and sign them players like Mike Morris as well. Um, they're the kind of players who it'd be nice to keep you know, with us for as long as we can. Maybe bring them to Asia if we go to Asia next or Africa next. And uh, yeah, pretty excited to have those guys here. So anyway, uh, with our good form, I thought we'd take on Auckland City today. They are in third. We are about halfway through our season. You can see 20 games played. A win here could really dent their chances of getting second place, which is actually quite significant to us. The top two teams in our division qualify for the Oceanic Champions League. Auckland City are without a doubt the strongest team, or certainly the second strongest team in New Zealand alongside us. And if they weren't to qualify this year, that would make my job next year of winning the whole thing just that little bit easier. So a win today could be quite big for us. Looking at the team, as I mentioned, it's a fairly strong team in terms of the kind of players that we have. I'm I'm pretty happy. I think I'm actually going to play Jason Hicks ahead of Gorski today. But elsewhere, Mike Morris, Chettleberg, Lovemore, Butler, Ruffer. Um, there's not too many crazy changes there. Basilaj in goal, of course. So, yeah, let's get into today's game. Reina, you guys might remember. I've not talked about him. But I signed him last year, and um, I don't know. Uh, the, the fans weren't happy with him as a signing. I brought him in as, on a free, as you guys might remember, at the start of um, my kind of reign in charge. And he didn't have the best end to the season last year. This year, though, really been a great player for us. His average ratings perhaps don't suggest that, but um, believe me, he's been a very solid player for us, playing regular first-team football 
And the Argentine has been, you know, one of our big players. Whether or not he'll hold down that position, obviously we've got a few new centre-backs on the horizon of joining. I believe it's Williams, if that's his name, still learning the names of players who are coming in. But if it is Williams who comes in at the end of this month, I'm quite excited by him, the American. He will certainly be competing with Rainer for that centre-back spot. Uh, financially, you guys might have noticed at the start of the episode, we are quite heavily in the red in debt. I should stress, I am within my wage budget. You know, I am sticking to all the budgets the board set, unfortunately, with some of these added on databases. The finances aren't super well balanced for the clubs, and it's just kind of one of those things we'll deal with. And you know what? In FM, you can't go bust as a club. Uh, the game kind of cheats to stop you going out of existence. And I'm hoping that if everything goes horrifically wrong obviously will be helped out there but I don't think it's going to be a problem obviously this isn't a super long-term save it's all about trying to get to the Oceanic Champions League this year then just destroying every team in the continent next year anyway at half time in this game nil nil nothing really to speak of yet we did have a chance I didn't talk about it it was apparently a clear-cut chance for us but uh, I think it was Lovemore just dragged it horrifically wide a draw here wouldn't be the worst result in the world. Of course, with a cushion we've got over the teams in kind of second and third, even at this halfway point, I kind of feel quite confident that we will just walk away with the league here. If we could go unbeaten, fantastic. These games against Auckland, the one that we live come before, and this one are the big tests. You know, if we can hold out for draws in these, I'm quite confident we can try and go unbeaten for the rest of the season, and that is what we will be trying to do. But at the same time, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. This year, top two is what I want. If we do that, fan bloody tastic. Anyway, they have got a chance. They're only the second chance of the game. Rayner, though, with a tackle. I praised him earlier. Now Hicks, the player who wasn't going to start, but I brought him in. Going down the left. Takes on his man. Nice little play. Morris. Options inside, but he is tackled by Billen. And now Auckland's going to attack. And that is Roberta. And, well, he scored. It's quite a nice goal, too. Nigel Roberta. And the, the unbeaten run is on the rocks. Everyone panic. Right, let's go a little bit more attacking here. I'm going to drop Hicks and bring in Gorski, I think. Might bring on Chris James as well to end the game for Ruffer, who is struggling a little bit with fitness. I think that is going to be what we do here. Just get some fresh legs on, get kind of some energy injected into the side. Do I want to make any other changes? Probably not really. Uh, I could drop Michael Morris, maybe. He's struggling a little bit, but with some of the injuries we've got to kind of our attacking midfielders and strikers, I don't quite have the flexibility I'd normally have. So I guess we'll just stick with that one change for now. We do have a set piece here. James, of course, on as a sub, whipping in the ball, but giving it away. And now Auckland on the counter from our set piece. I do not want to lose to these guys. I want to beat them at some point. They've hit the crossbar from across. I've never seen that before, ever in FM. Never. Oh, dear. 15 minutes left. I mean, we've got more attacking here. We can't really go too much more attacking. Can we rescue the draw? That is the question. Well, not if Gorski does silly little tackles like that. We can't. Right. Tactical changes are needed. Mike Morris, I want you to go to Shadow Striker Attack. James, you are going to go to Advanced Playmaker Attack. Reniga Attack. We're just, we're just sending everyone on attack, if I'm honest. I don't know why I'm saying it aloud. You guys can see kind of what's going on here do I want to switch to a second strike I don't think I do I don't think I do where are we where are we going Jack what what have you done there right confirm those changes but we're not gonna make any more subs I don't think although players are pretty dead I just don't have the options to bring on as much as I've improved the squad strength in, strength in depth it's just still not quite there I guess we could bring on Nazari for uh, Morris. We'll do that. There's only five minutes left. I mean, these changes probably won't make a difference. But I believe... I really want to beat Auckland City. It'd be annoying to lose this unbeaten run. And we aren't going to lose it here. Which is a real shame. As I said, Auckland City... Really the only other team in this division capable of competing with us. And it's a shame that so far in my reign, we've not been able to overthrow them. They are a team that probably have better quality players than us. But at the same time, that doesn't make it any less disappointing. They struggled at the start of the season. They've been coming along strong since. You can see they're 10 points behind us. They've only lost one game this season themselves. They've just drawn a lot. So they really are our big rivals this year. But yeah, that is not the result I wanted in this live com. 
Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap things up for me. Hopefully you have enjoyed this episode. Next time, uh, we might do an end-of-season live comp. I might, 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 because we're out of the domestic cup, even join you at the start of next season. The reason for that being, of course, is that if we're going to qualify and win the league, there doesn't seem a lot of point in live comment. it. Maybe I'll do an end-of-season kind of review commentary, and then we'll go into next season as well in the same episode in a slightly longer kind of more rambly commentary like let me know if you'd like to see that with the pentagon i want to keep it moving forward especially these quite arbitrary league games for the most point i don't feel like there's much need to kind of live con them all uh, but yeah let me know what you think before we go just one other thing i'll show you my manager profile so you can see how we're getting on reputation hasn't improved mick mccarthy still hates me for no apparent reason my knowledge of china actually rose randomly i don't know if i mentioned that before when I joined Wei Takare, it was only at 50%. It then jumped up to like 90%, and now it's on the decline again. You can see we also have a knowledge in New Zealand increasing. Look at our coaching stats. We've not got any new coaching badges. This is just na natural progression. But you can see stuff like player knowledge is increased, motivating man management's increasing. I'm really trying to kind of be very, quite hands-on, although it says my assistant does the talking for me. You can see my media, media handling is at 78%, which is pretty decent. Despite the financial issues, which I kind of mentioned at the club, the fact we are £700,000 in the red, my managing finances is really good because I'm sticking within the budgets the board are setting. Anyway, you can kind of see the rest of the stuff on screen. You can also see my win percentage here, which is climbing since we butchered it in China for four games. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap things up from me. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do smash the like button, show your love on this series. I'll be back next time. Hopefully you guys will be too. And other than that, it is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.